Form. Forest into the quarter-final of the UEFA Cup, Villa already booked for a Wembley final in the Coca-Cola Cup. Tonight, it was an FA Cup quarter-final that brought them together at the city ground, Nottingham, where our commentator is Clive Tilsley. East meets West for a place in the semi-finals of the FA Cup. The East Midlands top team, Nottingham Forest, already UEFA Cup quarter-finalists. The West Midlands leading side, Aston Villa, already booked it at Wembley for the Coca-Cola Cup final. Mark Crossley won the biggest poker game in town last weekend to put Forrest belatedly into the last eight. Tonight he plays his 44th club game of the season more than any other Premiership player. Forrest are the most overworked team in the top flight and in the absence of Colin Cooper and Alfie Holland, Chris Bart Williams is pressed into service as an emergency centre-back tonight. Aston Villa have had more luck than most on the injury front this season, but the strain is beginning to tell on their modest-sized squad. Half a dozen players missing tonight, including Southgate, Townsend and Johnson. So Franz Carr, who made his name as a whippet winger with Forrest in the 80s, starts a game for Villa for the first time. Referee Martin Bodnam signalling a period of silence to reflect upon the tragedy in Dunblane, which puts football and everything else into his true perspective. Only once since the 60s has a team from the Midlands won the FA Cup. Not since the late 50s have the ribbons of these two famous clubs adorned it. There's, looking, there's little looking for Kevin Campbell, who's a cup winner with Arsenal, of course. Clearance by Alan Wright. Savo Milosevic. Nottingham Forest must almost have forgotten what it's like to settle a cup tie at the first time of asking with the uh, UEFA adventures and a draw in every round of the FA Cup so far. Ian Taylor back in the Aston Villa lineup from injury tonight. Gary Charles back on familiar territory. One of the uh, two former Forest players in the Villa lineup. Aston Villa have not required a replay as such in either of their cup runs so far. Schimmicker for Roy. This is Little. Now Stone. Wohn is in the penalty area. Ekiog only just got the uh, slightest of touches on the ball there. Charles straight to Little. His successor at Nottingham Forest. Roy to Wohn. Pierce. Stuart Pearce was uh, an inspiration to Nottingham Forest at White Hart Lane on Saturday. Ian Wohn, a loose one, seized upon by Carr. This is York. Dwight York! Smart stop by Mark Crossley. Quickly down to his left. As he did with such effect in that shootout against Tottenham. He's agile for a big goalkeeper. Milosevic. Two Nottingham Forest passes going astray in the uh, opening moments. David Phillips caught in possession there. Put out by Gemmel. Milosevic trying to make something of it. Scott Gemmel was the man who tried to use his chest. The referee could hardly have been better placed though. Controlled by Pierce. Oh. Winning it from Bart Williams. Into Milosevic. Oh. Smothering stop by Crossley. Terrific setup by York. 
The loss of it's just unable to make the most of it. There's a real craftsman to Art York. Waited and waited, it was perfectly timed, perfectly weighted, perfectly directed. Just running away from Milosevic a little bit, but he didn't lift it at all, did he? And away by Phillips, Schimmicker, this is Draper. Now Charles, Milosevic, Draper to Taylor this time. Alan Wright. Savo Milosevic, Mark Draper, into Dwight York, on goes Alan Wright. Sublime football from Aston Villa. Cutting through the Nottingham Forest defences with some sharp and cleverly thought out into passing. If it had fallen to Alan Wright's left foot, it might just have been a different story. York looking for Carr. He stole a march on the others. The bounce wasn't too kind for him. Now he's got a chance. A little had to make a block. Franz Carr's had uh, four different clubs since he left Nottingham Forest. He went to the semi-finals with Sheffield United three years back. Since then, Brian Little has signed him both for Leicester City and now for Aston Villa. But he's been little used in his uh, year and a bit at Villa Park. Draper, McGrath's there, came off Milosevic, oh, hit the bar from Ekiok, right will try his luck, and that's blocked on the edge of the six-yard box by Bart Williams, Hugo Ekiok came closest. He's such a big, powerful man, and he got everything behind that effort after uh, Milosevic had rather messed up, and the frame of the goal still shaking. Looking for Carr, it's another terrific pass from Dwight York. Carr to Milosevic. Well, the extra touch allowed Pierce to get across. He has scored goals in recent games. He just went a little bit too long there. Draper. Came off Phillips' head, Ekiog is there again. So is Milosevic, Crossley did what he could under pressure from York and survived to tell the tale. All Aston Villa at present. Campbell. Worked the space for himself. Roy. <laughs> Skimming ground shot. Bosnich will certainly feel he had his near post covered. First effort blocked by Campbell. Roy steadied himself and then thought, why not? Carr. Right. Here's York. Just showed a little bit too much of that to Bart Williams. The game has uh, opened up nicely from tentative beginnings. Milosevic. Park. Taylor. Draper. Let it run for Carr. Franz Carr. It's good! The former Nottingham Forest player has put his former employers behind in the FA Cup. It's a dream night for Franz Carr. His very first start for Aston Villa against the club who really made him. He waited and waited, picked his spot, picked his moment, curled it beautifully. Strangely enough, in the career of a player who's been about and had his moments in the FA Cup, that is the first goal he has ever scored in the competition. Terrific finish.
Whoa. Into the pocket of Roy. That's nicely played. Brian Roy. Good save. Bosnich was given the opportunity just to set himself there. And then completes the job with a fine take. in a very measured way unbeaten in the 10 cup ties they've played so far this season they have a very self-assured air about them at present one or two of the uh, names have changed but it's the same Aston Villa rhythm and the same quality about their play that we've seen for much of the season and a familiar name to Nottingham Forest their old boy, Franz Carr, the difference between the sides with his first goal for Aston Villa. The half-time score in this little was sponsored FA Cup quarter-final, Nottingham Forest nil, Aston Villa 1. The pacey Paul McGregor will replace Brian Roy in the Nottingham Forest lineup for the start of the second half. Villa Park has staged up team semi-finals since Aston Villa themselves last reach the last four of the FA Cup Johnny Hitchens and Peter McParland were the scorers the last time they won a quarter final 1960 they've been beaten six times at this stage since then but Nottingham Forest to inflict defeat upon them they're gonna have to find a little bit more in the second half just signs that maybe they're feeling the strains of a long season more than Aston Villa at present I reckon more than half the players on the field are up to the 40 game mark now for the season and beyond Roy's problem is a high entry for McGregor who had 15 minutes at Tottenham on Saturday this is his FA Cup debut it's a little longer tonight Phillips McGregor starting on the right hand side which is his favourite really blocked by Schumacher and stolen by Wright Little there Stone Little well struck, wasn't it he got a late equaliser for Nottingham Forest at Villa Park earlier in the season the two premiership fixtures this season have produced two draws thanks to two late Forest equalisers Steve Stone saved the point late on here in December. And Villa have had the better of both games by Forrest's own admission, but they haven't won either of them. Campbell just behind Stone. Right. You all fall alone. Turned by McGregor. Turned into Taylor, though. York was just caught on his heels, though. I wasn't expecting that pass from Draper. Stone is getting the license to do that now in the uh, reshaped Forest lineup. And with McGregor in his station out on the right hand side. Stone looking to feed off Campbell where he can. Now popping up on the left hand side. Whoa. Little. McGregor. 
Norris keen to feed their substitute whenever they can. He's won a corner from right. New factor in the equation for McGregor. Just uh, settled Aston Villa a little bit more. Bosnich choosing to punch. Some distance though. Little. Now Pierce. Hit with feeling. <laughs> Big shot for handball. Corner is the verdict. Gary Charles, the defender. Ironically, down at the end where the Aston Villa fans are gathered, otherwise the shout might have been a little bit louder. Gettles corner. Headed by Charles. Now Wone! Off the line by Wright. And cleared by Ekior. Biggest scare yet for Aston Villa. Alan Wright on central juicy, denying Ian Wode. Kept in by Stone. Gemmel. Wode. Oh, he was close for a moment or so ago. Ian Wode, whose sharp shooting was such a feature of Forrest's last home game in the cup against Tottenham. Beat Bosnich, but couldn't beat Wright. That's what he's there for. And just prior to that, there was a suggestion that, well, it certainly hit the uh, top of Gary Charles's arm, and that's why Stuart Pearce appealed. Whoa. Gemmel's on his way. I wasn't quite sure where it was coming from. Bosnich committed. Gemmel, not on target, though. Bosnich came a long way, he was uh, off limits, and he didn't quite get to the ball, but Scott Gamble looking over his shoulder initially for the ball, and then having to look over his shoulder again, couldn't steer it goalwards, it was a very sharp chance. away for fun all season long Davis again Pierce got to the ball that time it's Phillips Little McGregor is wide to the right looking to play it beyond right for Paul McGregor Stone stretching to get there Echey all the way as far as McGregor good challenge by right not such a good clearance though, Little, in goes Lee, Charles, well he felt that he had time for an extra touch and he was right, just. We're in stoppage time but there'll be quite a bit of that, it's Pierce. And it was Little who got the final touch, Little who scored that late equaliser at Villa Park earlier in the season. No wonder they're anxious. Forest have stunned them late in the day in each of the Premiership games they've played against them this season. But Des Little couldn't control the header. Charles clear. Milosevic has kept it in and has Dwight York in support of him. Two against two here. Sabo Milosevic. Well, he had York and Davis. Up there with him, cover thin on the ground, and Milosevic tried to break the net open. Steve Chettle for Nottingham Forest. Header away by Ricardo Schimmicker. Charles. 
Aston Villa throw. Frank Clark won the league, won the League Cup and the European Cup in his brief playing career here, but never got beyond the quarterfinals of the FA Cup as a Nottingham Forest player. And it looks like this may be as far as he gets as a manager this year. Crossley. Came off the head of Chettle. Cleared by Ekiop. David Phillips for Nottingham Forest. Mark Crossley, the goalkeeper, still in there. He won it in the air. And nobody could feed off him. He got up above Jason Lee. Crossley is back. Milosevic in possession. York, now Taylor. Possession all important for Aston Villa. Just trying to run the clock down with Draper. Throw is Nottingham Forest. Time is not on their side, though. Like nearly four minutes of added time, as Alan Evans is pointing out to the referee. Oh, what a difference a year makes. Last season was a dogfight for Aston Villa. This season is becoming a glory trial. Nottingham Forest must somehow pick themselves up and dust themselves down in time for five minutes arrival next week. Before the month is out, Aston Villa will play in the Coca-Cola Cup final their first FA Cup semi-final since 1960. 1-0 winners at the City Ground tonight. You haven't played a senior game for over a year. Where have you been? Um, I think I've been hiding, to be honest. Um, it's just the, the way the system's been going at the club. Um, obviously, me being a winger and the gaffer wants to play five at the back, it's very difficult for him to find a place for me. Um, so, just wait and see, whether get your chance and get in there and try and do well. What a place to get your chance, because this is home for you, really, isn't it, Nottingham Forest? Um, yeah, I still live here. I've still got a lot of friends here. Um, so, like I say, it's nice to come back to your former club and uh, score a goal. It's terrific for us, you know, semi-final now. It's, it's a fantastic achievement. Um, but we don't want it to end there. I mean, that's, that's where we're at now. You know, we keep saying, we keep reminding each other, don't let the season finish now, lads. Try and keep going. Probably thought you'd seen the last of Franz Carr or the back of him anyway. I thought he'd retired, actually, um, and then he turns up tonight and puts the ball in my goal. So, um, all credit to France, you know, he's been sat on the bench for a while and he's got himself a little bit of limelight tonight. Fair play to the lad. Alan, the FA Cup delivering another exciting match for us. Well, it was, and there was lots of chances in the game. It was good for the, the punters that paid to get in. <coughs> I think the first half that Villa played exceptionally well, Dwight York was sensational. They could have come in at half-time 5-0 up, but in the second half, through a mixture of guts and determination, and a massive will to win, Forrest nearly got back in the game, and they might just have snatched a draw. Wouldn't you just know it, five years after he walked out on Forrest, Franz Carr comes back on his full debut, gets the goal that puts him out of the cup. Must have been like a dream for him. I mean, it, it was a fabulous finish, and... He goes past Chettle in the first instance, and he comes into the edge of the box here, and we've circled the two players, Pierce and Bart Williams. Now, one of them must go to the ball, but he's allowed to take in his favourite right foot, Lines it up, no challenge, but a fabulous finish, giving Crosley no chance. You kept a special eye tonight on the two Villa strikers, didn't you, Dwight York and Milosevic? Well, I'd say Dwight York was exceptional in the first half. He, he is red hot at the minute. Milosevic is in and out. Dwight York's playing with so much confidence. This is terrific play. Close control, on his right foot, good shot, decent save. But he shows strength and determination here. It's played down the line. He gets under control. He runs at Bart Williams, he comes inside him, ball's always under control, and what about this for a pass to Milosevic? Between two defenders, Milosevic runs in, and this is weak. He's got to do better there, he should have scored. This control from Dwight York is exceptional. It really is frightening. This, the pass is even better. He turns around, outside the right foot, great pass to Franz Carr, good control, 
Plays a nice ball into Milosevic. He's got to hit it first time there. But he delays it and Piers gets across. I personally think that David Gore would have scored there myself. <laughs> <laughs> I might not have been there in time. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute, though. You, you, you're talking about Milosevic. Villa are, what, fourth in the Premier Division. They're the semi-finalists in the Littlewood-sponsored FA Cup. They're into the Coca-Cola Cup final. It's a hell of a season for them. I think that if they, if they didn't win another game at the end of the season, they would have a great season. But they're so close now, they will be disappointed if they win nothing. I think they deserve to win something. Well, while Villa contemplate that possibility of a, a cup. More chances of Europe in uh, the league with their placing. Coca-Cola Cup final, FA Cup semi-final. It's all going well, isn't it? No stopping them. Absolutely not. Yes, Aston Villa are still on course for a cup double after reaching their first FA Cup semi-final for 36 years. Villa, who have already booked a place in next week's Coca-Cola Cup final, will face either Leeds or Liverpool in the last four, thanks to a goal from one of their forgotten stars. Franz Carr could be forgiven for thinking his name was destined never to hit the headlines during his Villa Park career. He'd been in the reserves for just about all of the 12 months since his arrival from Leicester City. But he finally made his senior debut last night against one of his former clubs, Nottingham Forest. And he couldn't have made a greater impact. His goal secured Villa's first FA Cup semi-final since 1960. It's nice to obviously get into to the next round, but I mean, the thing for me was going back to my former club and scoring the winner. I couldn't have wrote the script any better. <laughs> but competition for places under manager Brian Little means that Carr could easily become anonymous again by the time the semi-final comes around later this month. I've been sat on the sidelines watching the games and sort of, sort of taking a step back thinking, bloody hell, it's good football, this is. Um, but it's nice to be part of um, a team or a squad and, and, and getting the game and contributing to the, to the side. In recent weeks, stroke the last couple of months, say he's, he's played in, in the position behind the front two in the reserve team because he, he wants to, to, to practice that particular role and um, well it's come off because he's played in a very very important game for us scored a very good goal and uh, we're all delighted for him Carr's only hope now is that his first ever goal in the FA Cup is followed by a few more and who knows possibly one at Wembley well by contrast Carr's former club Leicester City's promotion hopes suffered a setback like to their first FA Cup semi-final in 36 years. They beat Nottingham Forest in the quarter-final last night. Now they face either Liverpool or Leeds in the semi-final at Old Trafford at the end of the month. The life of Brian seems to be getting rosier all the time. Last night, his young Villa side, depleted by injuries and suspensions, grabbed the initiative and had Forest backpedalling in the first half. An early chance falling to Milosevic. A goal seemed inevitable as Villa pounded the Forest goal. Hugo Ekiog hitting the crossbar after a short corner from Mark Draper. Villa were carving out opportunities at will. York and Carr created this one. Milosevic missed again. A goal finally came when Draper's dummy created a chance for Franz Carr. The former Forest winger picked his spot. In the second half, it was Forrest's turn to pressurise Villa. Ian Wone's shot cleared off the line by Alan Wright. Late on, the Forest pressure almost told. Des Little heading over from close in. But Villa were through, and Brian Little allowed himself a few moments of celebration. He wants Villa's winning habit to go on. We don't want it to end. I mean, to be honest with you, if it finished now, if we lost our next series of games, then it would uh, be a major disappointment to us. So we're trying hard to keep going and uh, Saturday in the league becomes very important to us now because we'll test the players, find out what they're made of after winning a game like this. Obviously we're through to the next round, I think this will give the club a major boost, obviously in the FA Cup, uh, but like I say, we've got the league, obviously the semi-finals and the Coca-Cola to look forward to um, and I think until we get some silverware then the fans will have something to shout about. The travelling Villa fans certainly had plenty to shout about last night, but the hardest hurdles are yet to come. One sobering thought, the last of Villa's seven FA Cup wins was in 1957, when none of the present squad was even born. Manager Brian Little was just three.